Hi there. My name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled Gordon Fullerton. So we lost an engine on the shuttle after what you would call V2. Now, one of the nice things about being in the Society of Experimental Test Pilots and being out at Edwards is just the cool people you get to meet. And I had many, I had a chance to fly the Gordon Fullerton in the F-18, and I also had a chance to interact with them a number of times uh, at uh, test pilot uh, symposiums and that. Um, we had one at the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Side Experimental Test Pilots rented the uh, facility for an evening event, and they had a really nice uh, catered dinner, and we had access to the uh, restoration facility downstairs where they restored uh, aircraft for the museum and also upstairs uh, gordon took and showed me the display where he had the pen that he used on a gemini uh, mission uh, back in the uh, early late well late 60s early 70s they would sell this astronaut pen i guess it had a pressurized cartridge so supposedly you could write a uh, white write in uh, vacuum and uh, zero gravity in that, and I actually had one. It, it didn't get me into the astronaut core, but I still had my astronaut pin. But uh, Gordon had some really cool stories he related. Now here's a picture of him as a, uh, a shuttle astronaut in his shuttle astronaut gear there, and this is a, a patch I have on my wall of the approach and landing tests. And one of the first things they did was, of course, they, they had the uh, uh, shuttle, the Enterprise, on top of the 747 and it was released and they came in and they evaluated you know the handling and uh aero uh, dynamics of the aircraft coming in uh, to land and there you see on the uh, the left side is uh, uh gordon fullerton's name on the patch and this is a picture of the enterprise uh, that was used it's of course as i'm sure you know it was the only shuttle that didn't fly in space it wasn't capable of flying in space actually it was a uh, it was kind of a ground test vehicle i was giving a check ride in the t-38 and uh, it was on top of the 747 taking off and we came around and took off right behind it they were going to go up and get some test points well uh, it was supposed to be a 45 minute test mission and they came back uh, almost immediately we came around for a uh, for part of the check ride i was given a check ride a heavyweight single engine and they pulled in right behind us and this is going down the runway on takeoff i said hey you got some fod which stands for foreign object damage uh, that's what you call any material on the runway i said hey you got some fod on the runway well what was happening is the they had an issue with the glue on the tiles and they were falling off uh as the thing was flying and they uh, they were losing quite a few of them so it's hey uh they had two F-104 chases, and they said, uh, you need to bring this thing back. So they came back around and landed. Now, Gordon Fullerton flew two space shuttle missions. He flew STS-3, which was the third space shuttle mission, and it was the third flight of the Columbia. And the major goal of this mission was to test the endurance of the space shuttle for long, relatively long duration uh, missions. It was supposed to be a seven-day mission, but it ended up being eight due to weather considerations. The, uh, the runway they were going to use at Edwards had flooded. Uh, so they came back uh, to uh, White Sands, and they are the only shuttle to ever land at White Sands. But the mission went around fairly well, no, no major issues. Now, the next mission he flew, STS 51F, um, was a, a little more interesting. This one. Uh, flew on, uh, first tried to fly on July 29, 1985. They um, got to the point where the main engines fired, and it was three seconds into the um, ignition of the main engines, the, uh, the solids fired about eight seconds in. But it was three seconds into the, uh, the mission when the engines uh, shut down uh, automatically, um, due to a problem with the um, RS-25 coolant valve. So that caused an automatic shutdown. So they uh, recycled things, and they tried it again on July 29, 1985. Now, uh, this is the interesting thing. I, I was uh, talking with Gordon Fullerton one time, and he says, yeah, we lost, uh, we lost an engine after what you'd call uh, V2, which, you know, in airline terms, that's, that's when you're going to go fly says, yeah, we lost an engine after V2 and, uh, we kept on going. So he kind of chuckled about that. 
Um, now, the interesting thing was I was watching this launch back in 85 at, at home um, in Crystal Lake, and I'm watching it, and I see the number two engine go dark. And I say to my wife, I said, they've lost the number two engine. And we listen for a second. The commentators are just doing their normal chit chat and stuff. And she says, well, they're not saying anything about it. And I said, they don't know. They're not paying attention. And then they get a few commands and a few exchanges. And all of a sudden they pick up on some key words and then they start talking. You go, you were right. They did lose an engine. Well, it's pretty obvious. It went dark. You get three lights, you go to two lights, you lost an engine. But what happened at three minutes and 31 seconds into the ascent, uh, one of the center engines, two high pressure fuel turbo bump, turbo pump turbine discharge temperature sensors failed. Easy to say, right? Uh, two minutes and 12 seconds later, a second sensor failed, causing the shutdown of the center engine. This is the only in flight RS 25 failure of the space shuttle program. Approximately eight minutes into the flight, now this is where things really get to be fun. Eight minutes into the flight, um, one of the same temperature sensors on the right engine failed and the remaining right engine temperature sensor displayed readings near the red line for the engine shutdown. Okay. You lost one engine and you're, it looks like you're about to lose the second. Well, what's the bigger problem? Uh, letting this engine run, hoping nothing happens or shutting the engine down and being placed into a abort situation that is extremely high risk. And I, and I talked to a couple of the shuttle guys and about, uh, I, I had seen some of these abort profiles early on, you know, return to landing site and that it was, and some of the pitch up required and things like that is like, you got to be kidding. And that was kind of their attitude too. Well, you know, good thought, but I hope we never have to have to play with that. Well, they, uh, what they did was they had one of the controllers say, Hey, inhibit the auto shutdown. Cause these engines will shut down automatically if it detects a failure, because some of these things can happen rapidly before the crew can almost even no notice them. So you want the engine to go down quickly so it doesn't blow up and take the other two engines that are right next to it. But in case you've got fault sensors, and there was a few uh, situations later on where they had issues with fault centers causing engines, uh, sensors causing engines shut down. Y y you don't want that happen happening. So you inhibit that. And uh, he said they, uh, they got to a little lower orbit uh, than they intended, but, but they got to orbit. Now here's the crew. Uh, there's Gordon, uh, next to me. I'm, I'm obviously not on the crew. I'm just superimposed, but that, that's him. The one, the one without any hair. And here's a picture of the shuttle interior. And I thought airliners had a lot of switches and stuff. And I would tell passengers, I said, we, you know, we really know what most of those do, but, uh, here's the little knob. You've got abort modes and you can sit there and you can dial them. And there's, uh, tell and a ATO, abort to orbit. And that's what you uh, select and it gives you all the appropriate information you need to abort to orbit. So that's one of the cool things about, about how fortunate I was. Um, they never get to be a shuttle astronaut or anything like that, but I got to talk to them, associate with them, hear their stories. And they're a bunch of cool guys. Uh, you know, you, you see the picture of Gordon there. You'd, you'd think he was a high school principal, mild mannered guy, um, can talk about all sorts of interesting things and just keep a, a calm voice. And it was, it's just interesting to listen to their stories. And I'm glad I got a chance, uh, to share his story. Um, he passed away a few years ago and, um, just, just one of the many astronauts, uh, I knew a lot of the early astronauts, uh, on the shuttle and one of just extremely interesting guys to talk to. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. Thanks for watching.